Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network.com. I'm Kerry Lutz, 1230 WBZT. It's been a long time. It's been too long. With us now, Chris Duane. And you know the websites, Don't Tread on Me. And Chris, how are you? Very good, Carrie. How are you? All right. So it's been two years and 10 million downloads on YouTube. And figure we have to do something to honor those milestones, right? Yeah. I just, uh, like 20 minutes ago, I went onto my analytics and took a look at it. And, and I saw the, the thing cross the 10 million uh, view mark. And uh, I was like, wow. <laughs> And it's uh, 566 videos, and uh, ironically, the first video I released was October 25th, 2011, called The Riddle. And um, yeah, I mean, it's two years to the date, 10 million views, close to 50,000 subscribers. Uh, it's been a lot of work, but uh, you know, I, I find it uh, you know pretty impressive that we were able to do that, especially given. You know the message that I've been teaching. I mean, it's not like you know I'm you know talking about uh, doom porn every two minutes and oh my god, you got to you know look at the bad guys over here and look at what they're doing over here and look at what they're doing over there. I mean, the overall theme I think has been to recognize that the world is uh, pretty messed up, but you need to stop emotionally worrying about things outside of your control and start taking personal responsibility and use logic to question your reality and and what you can do in your own personal life. So it's um. I think it's a kind of unique message. It's definitely found uh, some sort of following out there, and and uh, you know I'm real happy with the work that I've done. I, I wish, uh, you know, it would be more popular. I mean, I look at some of my uh, kids. Look at uh, you know some of these YouTube channels out there. You know, for cartoons and you know kids falling down, and uh, man, they got you know millions of uh, tens of millions of views. And uh, or look at Miley, <laughs> Miley Cyrus. So I, I guess in in the grand scheme of things, you know, ten million views is really nothing. But I think, given the message that we've had, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, look. I mean, you know, pop. You can't compare what you're doing, what I'm doing here, to popular culture. I mean, let's face it, man. You know, it's just there's no comparing the two because people don't want to know the truth and you and I, we deal in the truth and they won't want to deal with the truth. They won't want to know about the truth until they have to. Right. Yeah. Isn't yeah that I what think it in comes a couple down? of my videos, I, I've said that uh, this type of information will be more popular than Justin Bieber. Um, you know, we're definitely a planet, a society, a culture in denial. I mean, that's the, overall theme i mean we're, we're living life way beyond our means we're we're taking on debts we never intend to pay off we're you know buying things with money that we don't have um and uh you know at some point this is going to end and i think you know like the alcoholic uh refer uh, reference you know that people never sober up people never take the hard medicine until they hit rock bottom and i think when the society hits rock bottom um there's gonna be the anger phase there's gonna be a lot of violence a lot of um, you know, a lot of mess. I mean, it's, it's what's going to happen. But I think afterwards, I think people can, you know, come out of this much stronger and better. I mean, the bar is set so low. I mean, just go to your typical Walmart anywhere in this country and look at how disgusting, you know, we've, we've devolved. I mean, you know, I think anybody living back, you know, geez, even 10, 20 years ago looks, looks at the average American now and it's pretty bad. I mean, it's, um, you know, just it's it's not good. So, it, but that that's only been able to uh, happen that way because people have been able to you know live in denial, live in denial of their finances, their their education, their their you know health, and uh, there are going to be real consequences for that. And, and uh, you know, it's not for us to to worry about how to fix the world. It's it's about us to what we can do to take personal responsibility for it. Hey, and speaking of Walmart, it's uh, one of my real favorite places to shop because the food there and all the products are so natural and healthy and good for you. And if you're looking for gardening tools at a discount, well, yeah, I actually bought a set of uh, barbecue tools there made in China. 
excellent quality for dirt cheap. But seriously, did you read about the people? The EBT card system went down. So Walmart, being a good corporate citizen that they are, said, all right, we can't tell what your limits are. We don't even know if you have any money on those EBT cards, but we're going to let you shop there anyway. And somehow these people got it in their heads that it was Christmas time, that Black Friday had come early, and that they could just clear the shelves. And this happened in two Walmarts in Louisiana, I guess through Twitter, Facebook, and just downright phone trees, all of a sudden, hundreds of these locusts descended upon Walmart and they cleared the shelves in record time. And all of a sudden, guess what happened? The EBT system came back up. This was a fault of Xerox, all big corporatocracy, exploiting corporate welfare and the welfare state. All of a sudden, the limits came back up and they said this woman had 49 cents on her card and they said, you can't take that. And they, she refused to accept it. And finally they had to call the cops and the cops said, no, you can't take it. And they didn't press charges against her, but they had hundreds of shopping carts filled that they then had to restock the shelves with. And that's just a glimmer of what's going to happen when the EBT card system goes down and you're basically going to have people with shotguns, you know, squaring off over, you know, how to split this stuff up when that system goes down. Yeah, that's that's why I, I know the anger phase is coming. Um, there there will be riots, there will be looting, there will be all sorts of stuff, but it will burn out. I mean, uh, I, I say it's the anger phase because it is just a phase. At some point, they're, it either become too dangerous to, to loot, it'll be... Uh, um, you know, people will be too far gone for that to happen. And, um, you know, as bad as it's going to be, um, you know, it is going to pass. But in the meantime, individuals need to make sure that they're not near those areas. And if you're near, uh, you know, a, an urban area, if you're near a, a place that, uh, you know, you know when the EBT cards are out because, uh, you know, at the first of the month they're out shopping, um, you know, you, you need to separate yourself physically from there. And, uh, I, I don't care if it means giving up a job or something like that, or, you know, buying a second home or, you know, storing your goods where, where your family is living in a boring part of the country. You, you need to start taking action, uh, towards that. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's coming, I don't know when or where, but it's going to happen real quick, um, uh, because, you know, an EBT crash uh, for for you know for a couple hours is one thing, but uh, you know, give yourself a dollar collapse scenario, and uh, you know, all of a sudden the power goes out. Uh, there's a thin veil of civility that will certainly pass as soon as the lights go out. Absolutely, and be in a state where you have a right to carry, a right to defend yourself, as opposed to being in a state where the state is going to defend you. Because when push comes to shove, Chris, you know it and I know it. There's only one person who's going to be able to defend you or a group or a community or a neighborhood, but that's what it's going to come down to here. Yeah. I think when we're talking about a a societal collapse thing, I don't think anybody will care about what the local legislation is about open carry. It's concealed carry or whatever. It'll, it'll literally be every man for themselves. And uh, there, there will be a lot of people who will be killed and dispatched uh, you know, both good and bad, um, you know, during a time period like that. I mean, you, you look at uh, what, you know, what happened in Egypt, you looked at what happened, you know, in any of these countries that go through uh, political or financial up- upheaval, um, you know, stuff gets very hairy very quick. And uh, the, the number one thing is, man, there is no amount of prepping, no amount of, you know, things you can do. If you're in an urban area surrounded by uh, either dependent people or highly aggressive people that tend to live in urban areas uh, that tend not to have any empathy, uh, may have psychopathic traits, uh, who are probably hopelessly dependent upon the dollar paradigm and the power, energy, food, uh, you know, and all the the stuff that comes along with it. Um, you know, <laughs> you could be John Rambo or or the guy from uh, I Am Legend. You're, <laughs> you're, you're not going to make it out of there. And uh, you know, I. I I moved away from, you know, urban New Jersey a long time ago out into the not quite farmlands of Ohio, but uh, definitely much better location out in Ohio, um, you know, in 2008, because I thought in 2008 it was all going to go down. And uh, for, you know, for some of it, it was. I mean, I was in the consumer business and it certainly took a major, major hit. 
Um, but that was an institutional problem, and uh, that got uh, you know taken over by the sovereign nations and central banks of the world. And now all the risk, all the bad debts are at that level. And I can tell you what, Carrie, whenever the next one comes, it is going to be the big one. There is not going to be uh, a bigger Hail Mary out there. We don't have a hope and change Obama and the waiting in the wings in 2000, like we did in 2008. Um, I don't think the world uh, trusts the Federal Reserve. Uh, you can see how Putin now played Obama uh, with their uh, war in Syria. Um, the world is waking up. The 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 uh, safety nets have been destroyed. Uh, people have been dealing with this economic uh, calamity since for five years now. Um, we don't have the savings. We don't have the jobs. We don't have the infrastructure. We don't have the political or financial legitimacy anymore. Um, and whenever it does happen, I I don't know when or where. I mean, geez, I expected it last year with the with the election. Um, but man, things are looking really, really shaky out there. And I just, you know, instead of worrying about things outside of your control, look at what you can do to make yourself independent of the system. Uh, you know, find real friends, real skills, and real assets. I couldn't have said it better myself and exactly what I've been doing here on the northern edge of uh, urban development where I live now. You know, was I better off where I was before? I'm not sure. At least. Where I am here in Florida, there's food production very close, huge farms real close by. Uh, will I be better any, any better off? I'm not certain of that fact. But uh, some other things we'll talk about coming up, but just the disintegration of the confidence in the U.S. government, i.e. Obamacare, up next on the FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com, 1230 WBZT. Hi, it's Carrie Lutz. I recently decided to move my retirement account into physical precious metals to hedge against the coming times. If you want to move an existing retirement account into physical precious metals that you can hold in your hand tax-free, there's no company that can do it more quickly and efficiently than Regal Assets. It took them just 24 hours to open my new IRA account, and all I had to do was fill out one simple form. The best part is that Regal Assets does all the work for you. They cover the setup and administrative costs for 2013. If you're interested in making the same move I did, call 855-678-6620. 855-678-6620. That's 855-678-6620. Or visit them at regalassets.com. You'll be glad you did. And tell them Kerry sent you. And we are back on the financial survival network.com. We're with Chris Dwayne, the Silver Shield. So, Chris, talk about lack of confidence and undermining of confidence in the government. Uh, if you had to pick a way to do it any better than Obamacare, you got millions of people getting thrown off their health and in, health insurance plans. They're promised a site that's going to work where they'll be able to buy health insurance cheaper than what they have now. They're going to save money, keep their doctor, keep their health insurance if they like it, a whole line of snake oil, and it turns out to be nothing but complete and utter fraud. And now... The system that we had, we're supposed to be able to transition away from to the new system, but the new system isn't there. It's a Shamira. It's a website with a with a uh, with a landing page and nothing else. It doesn't exist. It's vaporware. And talk about people who are pissed every day. More and more people find out about it. More and more of you find out you've lost your health insurance or you will. Your employer is dropping it, dropping your spouse, dropping your kids. You know, 20,000 people in Detroit just found out that uh, we're bankrupt, but we're going to give you $125 a month. You know that new healthcare.gov? Go there and buy a health insurance policy and, uh, you know, have fun. And you know how that's going to turn out. So confidence in government you thought it couldn't go any lower but this is how the system unwinds and this once the confidence gone chris that's the end of it right yeah i mean it's what a, a brilliant debacle obamacare is um it couldn't have come at a better time um 
you know, to, for them, <laughs> some of the best quotes I got were, were uh, one of the programmers knew that it was broken, and they said, "Just go ahead with it um, and and get it up on on the day that they they launched it." Um, I, I can't imagine any businessman. I can't imagine any business, any corporation, just saying, "Oh yeah, put up this major, uh, you know, implementation that's going to affect every aspect of the economy and people's lives." And yeah, it doesn't work, but just put it up anyways. And then my my favorite quote is from Nancy Pelosi: "Just fix it." Like, oh, okay, okay, we'll we'll just do that for you, Nancy. Um, you know, the, the arrogant attitude of this top down, uh, oligarchy that we have, um, you know, thinking that they can just, you know, manipulate our lives and, and then have everybody just do as they wish. Um, the, at some point the, the real economy, the real market, the real, uh, you know, people's best interests will be served, uh, by simply not listening to them. Uh, I don't plan on, you know, I, I haven't had insurance in four years. I certainly don't plan on getting it now. Um, my family's young and healthy, and you know, I've I've got my own savings plan. And if anything should ever happen to me, then we'll deal with it then. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to be forced into some government program that uh, you know I'm against. And and fortunately, I don't even think people need to uh, you know make it a political stance. They, it's just they can't. They can't join. I mean, it's it's not even an issue of of uh, you know not doing it. So. I hope uh, the drama continues to go um, and uh, that they don't never fix it and that it shows the complete ineptitude and, and, the, uh, and why the government should stay out of these things. Hey, and, you know, one thing I've done lately, I got a couple of years on you, Chris, in case you didn't know, um, <laughs> but, you know, getting healthy, eating healthier food, cut the junk out of your diet. I mean, I know you've heard me say it before, but get the crap out you know so much of the food that we eat is what passes for food it's not food it's stuff that's concocted in a food kitchen with artificial flavoring artificial this and you know man i look back at the garbage that i ate and man i physically i feel like i'm 20 years younger 20 pounds you could pretty much figure you lose a pound you know or depending on what percentage of your body weight you need to lose, you get rid of it. I mean, you saw me in Texas. I've lost 10 more pounds, and I'm fitting into clothes that I haven't fit into for 15 years. But physically, I'm just in much better shape. All the counts in my blood are way, way down, and I'm just a different person. And I haven't felt this good. I'm telling you, man, I'm just a different person. And that will eliminate... 70 to 80 percent of the diseases that you're going to get the chronic diseases all deal with stuff that you put into your mouth so you eat healthy and the need for obamacare goes away yeah you're going to get some rare disease some weird forms of cancer nothing you can do about it it's going to kill you um a lot of stuff but smoking you know cancer emphysema heart disease All this other stuff, purely avoidable. Type 2 diabetes, 90% of the cases, totally avoidable. The other 10%, totally controllable. So if you do what you're supposed to, control your weight, because that's the primary measure of your health is your weight. All right? And uh, if you don't drive like a maniac like I do, all right, most of your risks in life are manageable. As far as the economy collapsing, well, that's there's nothing we can do about that. You know it and I know it. It'll happen when it happens. But staying healthy, you can control about 80% of it. And I don't know about you. I don't really want to live that long, but you'll live a longer life and a happier life because as long as you do live, you'll be healthy. And exercise, right? Man, like nobody in this freaking planet exercises in florida here chris we got a sidewalk on every street and there's nobody walking i mean it's unbelievable yeah it's uh like i said we're we're living in denial of everything our finances our politics our health um you know it just it, 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 we, we need this collapse i i can't i've said this a hundred times we we need this collapse um 
to to reset the values that we have and and everything we do and and uh, you know touch and and support. So right now we're supporting a debt and death paradigm. That's what our life is, and we're living in denial of the debt and death that we do spread. Um, there are real consequences. There will be blowback, both international and and domestic. Uh, we can't yeah. continue to spread debt for the domestic population. We can't continue to spread death for the international population. The world's waking up. And uh, I think those that get ahead of the curve of the single largest event in human history will be position themselves to be in a great deal of influence to create the next paradigm, whatever it may be. It, the world needs it, too, because the world's emulated us, gone ahead of us in certain respects. And the world needs it, too, because uh, you've got to get rid of these excesses. Purposes of depressions, recessions, get rid of the excesses that occurred during prosperous times. We've never allowed that to happen since the last Great Depression. And values, like you say, family values, we need to rediscover that. It's so important. So don't dash tread dash on dot me, financial survival network dot com, and just get ready for it because it's going to be here soon enough. And just imagine a world tomorrow when you go to dip your ATM card, it doesn't work. When you go to the supermarket to buy your groceries and you try your credit card and it doesn't work, just remember, just think about that because that's the world that eventually is going to be here and you need to be ready for it. All right, Chris, we'll talk with you again soon. It's been too long. Hey, Liberty Mastermind, February 21, 22 in Vegas. Site will be up shortly. Order forms will be up. We can't wait to see you there. All right. Take care, Karen. Hey, you too. Hey, if you're a coffee connoisseur like me, you need to try an amazing new roaster out of L.A., Tonks Coffee. These guys are fanatical about delivering the best beans in the world. They source directly from the growers, roast it, and ship it to you within 24 hours. So it's the most fresh coffee you've ever tasted. Every two weeks, you get a new batch of incredible beans roasted to perfection. If you're hitting a cafe most mornings, this is a much better and more economical way to get great coffee. Tonks is by subscription only, and they're offering you a free sample. Use the URL tonks.org slash liberty. That's T-O-N-X dot org slash liberty. Get some for yourself or send it to someone you know who appreciates the finer things tonks.org slash liberty again t-o-n-x dot org slash liberty the financial survival network helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy get our complimentary newsletter at financial survival network.com this is the financial survival network 